Fight game on point. There's, there's some stuff here. Michael, you should know in episode 216 of We Were Gamers, my segue game is never on point. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. We're back. It's another week. JJ's here. Hello. Yes, it is. I, I am. S- what? <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> yep. That sounds about right. <laughs> Michael. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. I'm Andy. Summer has officially started, friends. I was bitten to death by mosquitoes yesterday. Hmm. It's this bad is probably beast. it's probably gonna be a problem for you as an owner of a standing body of water. No, 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 no. no. Hold on. A pool is not a standing body of water. I mean, if you're doing it right, it's not right. Yeah. It's also treated. Yeah, True. but like, I mean, it means areas around are wet is sort of my point, right? Uh, that was my, uh, I mean, obviously they're not going to live in the chlorine, right? Uh-huh. Areas around are wet. I mean, water splashes out of the pool and then maybe over with the, you know, other, all right, whatever. Fine. <laughs> you don't want to, don't want to go along with my belief that pools cause mosquitoes. You don't have to. I would send me the send me send me the uh, white paper on that one. Don't would... have any okay. reason to believe okay. that. If you have an actual white paper on it that you want to send to me to prove me wrong, Podcast people on the internet, at go ahead. Gamers dot com. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the mosquitoes come from somewhere else. I don't know. They weren't like. I'm pretty sure they were in the front yard because we were working on some adulting. Uh. I I don't know about you guys, but I don't. I've kind of used the locked away in your house thing to become a bit of a slob. I don't know. It seemed real easy to just not worry about it because people weren't coming over. Yeah, no company. Um, I don't know. I think that. Let's see. 50 percent of my house needs like significant cleaning so we cleaned the garage and then we got bit to death by mosquitoes that's hmm. it yeah the garage the part of your house where people also wouldn't go even if they did come over <laughs> you know i didn't think about it that way i just thought hmm. what's the part of the house that's the messiest we should work on it I mean, that's what, you know, you want to say it's the messiest part of the house. I I don't know if that's true or not, but hey, that's a fine place to start a cleaning, right? Totally no, no. reasonable. And I, I'm glad. But the way you led that I, in. You know, I'm just glad. I'm glad you waited till after I was done before talking me out of it. <laughs> so now the garage is the cleanest part of the house, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, at least the most organized for sure. It's uh, good. Yeah. Well, well done to us. I don't think that that's actually the truth about the beginning of summer. Because after finishing the garage, we rewarded ourselves with some barbecue. The summer oh, I got, season hold begins. On. I want to I talk about adulting for a little oh, bit. Oh, we're going back to though. cleaning our garages? Okay. No, we're talking about pools. Oh, wait. Oh, hold on. I can't. I don't. I still haven't looked up mosquitoes I, and pools. I'm not going to talk about mosquitoes anymore. <laughs> okay. we're, we're over it. Uh, hey, you guys, we got a pool. How long have you been working on this pool? You didn't announce it's this at all. It takes a, months to dig a yourself. pool. Uh, it's a. It came in a package from Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> it's about fifteen inches deep. <laughs> uh, is it comfortable? Uh, my, uh, my wife was very hot the other day and was like, I, "We want to get like a little a little kids pool, like a toddler pool, you know? Uh huh. A waiting yeah. pool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we ordered one and uh, it showed up the other day. And exactly, you know, whatever my wife gets off work, it's like a certain exact time and like, oh, one second. And she was out in that pool. <laughs> nice. Is that a uh, ice bath situation? Warm water, hose, uh, temperature? Yeah, it's, the, it's the hose. Okay. Um, but the hose, I mean, the hose water was still relatively cold. I mean, I put my foot in there and it it's was tap, you know, it was not warm. Um, yeah. You know, it was not warm to the level of like, she had her feet in it and not her whole self in it at the start, right? Got it. Oh, and then it warms up in the sun and then... Uh... Yeah, and then she set the chair in it and sat down in that later. And so, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So that was, a, 
That was the big excitement over here this week. You've got to try the pool. You can't. Is this, this is a one person sized fifteen inch pool? You're lucky you get one person, man. <laughs> <laughs> it it fits that beach. You know, one of those those low beach chairs. Uh-huh. You can fit exactly one in the center of it. Okay, that's the size you get. Okay, nice. Yeah. Anyway, I thought that was fun. It is fun. Absolutely, it was fun. So there you go. <laughs> The real summer begins when you're outside barbecuing every day. Does anyone agree or disagree? Love barbecue so much. Yeah. Okay, now I say barbecue as a general I term because say, technically define, I have a grill. Define. Technically I have a grill, not a barbecue. Barbecue is still well, a style uh, of cooking. Yeah, you have a grill you could use for barbecuing. No, I can't because I can't put briquettes in it. Barbecuing can only be done on charcoal? I believe so. No, no. Yeah, I don't know that I believe in that. Well, but it's a grill because it's gas. It's not. Can you have a charcoal grill? Yeah, yeah. Barbecue is the style of food, right? Yeah. You well, can definitely, prepare a barbecue with a grill. I definitely. Yes. Okay. I think there are differences. Oh, boy. Here we go. We're going into this blind. I think there are differences in the appliance that do not apply to the food type, right? So, like, if you're talking sure. about food, yeah. you could say, like, I have grilled tomatoes, which is not barbecue food. But then you could also say, I made barbecue, and people would be like, cool, what meat did you cook with what sauce on it, right? Uh, but I believe the appliances are also named differently. Like, a grill would be gas, and a barbecue would be non-gas, Yeah, you can still make barbecue with a gas grill. That's, hold on, that I just said that right. Like you but can yeah, make the yeah. food. So if you're if you're referring to the appliance, then usually you're referring to either charcoal or wood. If you're talking about a barbecue, yeah, but not a grill. I, if I said a grill, grill, just isn't a grill just the slatted thing that sits on top? A grill is in a. <laughs> you could have a grill in a barbecue. But you can also have a grill on a fire pit, which is not a barbecue or a, a grill. So there's just different ways of burning stuff. You know what's point. funny? None it's, of them are we, grills. I didn't realize how many times you re, reuse the same words. I'm making barbecue on the grills on my barbecue. Yes. Yeah. That's English sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, words have context and it means things. Although so just in this barbecue, instance, the context barbecue is might not actually helpful not, because it's all the same context. Barbecue might not actually be English. <laughs> oh, that's the fairly yeah, possible, right? I mean, how much of English is not actually English? Ninety nine percent, maybe ninety nine percent, somewhere in there. <laughs> there was one word I can't remember what it was that some lexiconist just came up with last week that like hasn't changed in two thousand years or whatever recorded history. Is it the word no? <laughs> Pretty sure that one has changed. Yeah, that one that one changes weekly. Okay. All right. Uh, so barbecue. semantics of the cooking we, appliances we talk aside, about let's talk about yeah, the food talk. because the that's food. what summer is, right? Yeah. What did you yeah. make? Uh, I made tri tips. Love tri tip, man. Nice choice. It's a very, very, um, very California. Yeah, it's a West Coast, almost Californian thing, right? But the uh, west side is the best side, so I'm left fine coast with that. is the best coast. West mm-hmm, coast mm-hmm. is the best coast. Anyway, I don't, I don't All necessarily true. ascribe to that, but I do know we have one of the best cuts of meat, and it's famous for being cooked in Santa Maria, California, a specific way, a place I visited many times when I lived up there. Uh huh. And so Santa I don't Maria know if it's like a tip, very legit. I know that people that I've talked to from New York, if I say tri tip, they don't know what I mean. It's called something else. I think it's just not a cut of meat that gets used out there. It's not that it's called something else. They just don't sell it. People don't eat it out there just because it's not popular. They haven't been enlightened. What was your experience, Michael, in coming this direction and finding out about Tri-Tip? Oh, no, we lost him. No, no, it's good. (laughs) I'm I'm trying to remember because it's it's, it's been a while. Uh, It has been a while. Good point. Yeah, I I remember having positive experiences with Tri Tip the first time I had it. So 
I mean, I mean, you should have positive delicious. experiences every time you have. It. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if if only you know that's not the case, but oh, yeah. I feel yeah, sad you know. for you. Someone burns it, or they don't well, season. Yeah, well you go or you go to a place where they serve subpar tri tip, and you're sad. And oh, okay. Well, then you go back to a spot that you like, and I still had a tri tip, so I knocked that up with a. Uh, some homegrown uh my wife's garden is coming in so we had some homegrown summer squashes like the yellow zucchini you know nice Mm -hmm. cut those in half with some some herbs and some some oil cook those right next to it it was amazing i like a good (sighs) grilled eggplant also also very good i haven't grilled eggplant ever you know what it works man it's yeah. like if you grill a mush, a big mushroom or whatever. Yeah, it might. Oh, well, grilled mushrooms are amazing, especially like you just take a whole portobello and throw it on there. Yep. That's what I'm talking about, man. No yeah. olive oil and right on the grill. Uh, mm-hmm. I also grilled some shishitos mm-hmm. in a little basket. Those are good. Uh, mm-hmm. Grilled onions also similarly good. Fantastic, but I didn't. My staple for grilling is usually like corn on there the whole time on the top because I Love got a, a two. Mm-hmm. I got a shelf, so you throw the corn in on the top and then cook whatever else. Uh, so okay though so, corn's not in yet there's no good corn yet i i was just gonna ask a question about corn um so when y'all cook it you know you you just told me what you do Andy, right you put it on the top for like a long time who's gonna be in there for the 45 minutes or whatever it takes you to cook the actual meat right mm-hmm. if the corn is in there long enough does it get those like burned in grill marks like it would from being on the actual heat depends on how you cook it and how hot your grill is when you so, cook corn, does that happen? <laughs> I if I cook them on the top shelf, I leave them in the husks. So that's no. So you right. can't get a grill mark. Um, yeah, yeah, but it keeps them from drying out when you do it that way. But I Definitely. have grilled them on the lower and the upper because somebody brought unhusked corn one time, and both places they have developed the grill marks. Yes, but you just can't leave them in nearly as long. Right, right. You, you have to start them later in the process or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, One of the chefs that. that I really like grills his uh, corn unhusked directly on the lower grill, but it's on a short time. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you gotta you gotta watch it. Oh, yeah. We made some like Mexican street corn recently. Oh, and so good. That's how you do it. Yep. You know, it's just like, it, dude. It's really easy. I mean, you, it's sour cream. It's like tahine or Mexican spice substitute. Mm-hmm. Um, I butter. have had it with really mayo easy. before. Uh, you can use mayo I, instead of sour cream as the binding agent. Whatever yeah. you want to use, mayo. It's, it's the thing to make the and... other stuff stick to it. We gotta get cilantro some cotilla, at the end. Cotilla cheese. Yeah. yeah, just sprinkle a little cheese on at the end or whatever mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, very good. Um, yeah, it's one of my go-to's. Easy. Yeah, it's because it really takes no prep. You just like throw it on the grill for a few minutes and bring it off and then just dump all that stuff on top mm-hmm. and it's amazing i've already prepped for some continued grilling uh of fish and some ribs later this week probably we'll see but uh today's food crime <laughs> <laughs> i uh think this is time for us to accuse one another of crimes you're serving a meal, and we need to decide in advance. Maybe we need to pick the meat in advance so that you have to pick two sides and two sides only, and you have to throw the others out. It's going to be tough, man. Only two sides. I thought originally about only being one. But that yeah. didn't leave you room to be. That leaves everybody room to be like, well, you could only pick one. But now you got two. So if you leave off something, j'accuse, you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'll go first I think since I, you already I, stole I think you one. Don't, of mine. I think you don't need to pick the meat here because I think it's gonna be pretty similar for at least in my opinion for almost anything that you're creating that you're calling barbecue right? yeah so if we limit it to barbecue i think we're all kind of even within the different styles i think we're all kind of envisioning the same sort of grouping of side dishes okay okay fair point 
corn. Oh, maybe this is a oh round robin. Round robin. You can't pick sure. something anybody else has picked. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I feel like that's probably not going to be difficult. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no, no. Let's go. I like it. All right, corn. All right, corn is the easiest choice, right? You gotta have corn. I, you know, I wouldn't go to it for ribs, but I, ev- I like literally everything else. I would eat corn with ribs. I I'm would totally too. Fine with that. I just, I, you know, it's fine with ribs because you're already using your hands. So, yeah, okay. corn. Uh huh. Corn and uh, corn anyway. Street corn. Regular. Yeah, some, some kind of corn. De decobbed and put into something else. Corn is an essential barbecue food. No question. You want to go, Michael, or should I? Sure, I'll go. Um, and I'm going to take coleslaw. I could leave it. I agree that I could leave it, but if it's there, I'm probably going to have some. As I uh, progress through this world, I like it less. Can I say that? And not Is that a food crime? It, no. Okay, but here's what I want to know, though. Uh, there are many ways coleslaw is prepared, and my guess Andrew, is that most of the ways you've had it involve a lot of mayonnaise. I actually make one coleslaw for myself that I quite like, um, but I think that if I called it coleslaw, you would also call it a food crime. Uh uh-uh. <laughs> Well, now you're going to tell us what it is. Yeah. There's no mayonnaise in it. Well, so that's what I mean. There are ways to make coleslaw without mayonnaise. Oh, okay. I didn't know if this was like a overabundance of mayonnaise that you were having a problem with. Uh, there are coleslaws out there that are like mostly soup mayonnaise. And that is just right. like turned me off completely. Um, this is more of like a fusion style inspired, right? It's got a lot of uh, peanut and soy sauce flavor. I've got okay. one that I make that's kind of like that. Actually, the one that I have, you you essentially are making peanut sauce and using that as the dressing. Okay, but it's not like peanut sauce. It's like ginger and soy, and there's like sliced shiitakes in it. I mean, it sounds like you're almost describing like Thai peanut salad or something. Yeah, it's more like a Thai peanut salad, right? Because it's like shredded cabbage but Napa right. cabbage and cut up big, but it's not really a salad. It's chopped like a slaw. Yeah. But from the, from the taste profile, you're probably not going to necessarily eat that with most. See, I wouldn't call it coleslaw. I would call it something else slaw because slaw is like the, the, the chop, but sure. But I feel like, like it's like a barely a step beyond just being a normal salad at this, at this point. See, okay, fine. Like, what actually makes it a slaw, you know? Like, just because you cut it up a certain way, that's a slaw? Yeah, because it's all, like, uh, julienned. But couldn't you julien, like, salad leaves, and then it just depends on how you dress it? I actually don't know the answer to this. I'm <laughs> just, truly... You sound, you sound <laughs> like you're... you're uh... Am I fishing for an answer no, here? No, no, I'm yeah, not. yeah. Or like you're that professor standing in front of the class trying to get us all to realize we've made the big mistake, you know, in our I assumptions don't, or something. I, yeah, I truly don't know. I, I don't eat a ton of <laughs> coleslaw anyway. I'm just wondering like, hey, what is like really what is the difference between, you know, you calling this coleslaw and it being just a it's salad? It's definitely not coleslaw. Coleslaw is mayonnaise. I think that's what I would say also. Probably right. I think a slaw in general tends to be shredded or finely chopped slaw, vegetables. Yeah, slaw is like certain ingredients, mostly cabbage and carrots, and, and then, then other also stuff. Like very heavily dressed is the other thing I associate with slaws. Mm, yeah, mm, they tend to be. Yeah, but not okay, always. Okay, but Michael, but... so did you pick coleslaw or just any slaw? I pick coleslaw specifically. That's your number oh, one. So- and some of that goes, so some of that is, dri- a lot of that is driven by when I, like, when I am really craving barbecue, I want North Carolina style barbecue, which is either chopped or pulled pork, uh, which lends itself really well to coleslaw. Man, pork is such a thing that I don't do much anymore. And if I do pork, it's carnitas. Super missing out, man. Pork chops, so good. Oh, yeah. Pork tenderloin, no. so good. No. Some sous vide pork chops. 
Change no, your own life. No dude, thanks. dude, it's so easy, man. Sous vide pork chops, so good. Pork tenderloin, you can grill it. There's like okay, a billion is... ways. It's so easy. Yep. It's so good. Okay. Your heavy mayo, heavy vinegar coleslaw, yeah? Yep. Mm-hmm. It nah. doesn't necessarily have to be heavy mayo, but definitely the vinegar. I can't call it a crime, but I'm not picking that. <laughs> It's a, so it's a nothing was stolen from me. In I'm glad. This exchange I'm here. glad he's picked. I'm glad he's picked this because that means we're probably going to end up with a crime of omission somewhere. Probably. So I, I, I guess I'll go here. I think in, in the, a lot of people have opinions here, but I think I'm going to take potato salad. Okay, I'm into that. But what goes into yes, your potato exactly. Salad? Very, right. very. Because so, the problem is yeah, here. Yeah. That no, there, this is not fair. there, there is a large gamut, and it's even bigger than slaw. Oh, totally. On potato salad, and some people uh-huh. even cheat and they throw eggs in there. And you better start with that question. <laughs> I mean, look here, you, look, bro, hear about this. Yeah, uh, when you make potato salad, are you using mayonnaise? Because you probably are, right? I would say yeah, a lot of generally recipes speaking, are using it. Sure, there's some. There's some. So here's a here's a instead, here's a spoil. Like, you know, it's like a German potato salad. German is mustard, but it also has mayo generally. It does generally also have a little yeah. bit of mayo. Uh, so the spoiler alert here is that there is a lot of eggs in mayo, right? So I'm not here to tell you that you can't make it with just eggs and oil or something. But at that point, like, why not just use the, the mayonnaise where they blended the eggs and the oil no, better than you can? Like hard boiled, chopped up eggs. Oh, and. Uh, what that's an egg salad now no Stop i know this, this. What I, look yeah, look there was a possible food crime that has been committed against me where they told me it was potato salad and it was equal parts hard-boiled eggs along with potatoes in mayonnaise and i it's said potatoes. i'm done eating this now that's a potato that's not a potato salad man they no, made that's... an egg salad and they put some potatoes in there yeah exactly don't do that Mm-mm. all right here here you go don't do that people you're doing that that's not potato salad that is you a food call crime. It egg and salad I... It has been perpetrated. In it. I know. Uh, so I'm talking about potato salad. So I'm talking chunks of potatoes. Okay. You're gonna cut up stuff like celery. Sure. You're gonna cut up stuff like onions. Mm. Maybe like a little bit of like finely chopped uh, carrots or peppers no. or something like Mm-mm. this. Nope. And blend all that stuff up with a big gooey like mayo cream blend thing. Uh, yeah, that, that's what you want. He's got to have a little crunch in there to go along with the potato. Otherwise, it's no good. That's what I you think want. your celery and uh, bacon should be your crunch. Okay. I mean, you, look, I'm not going to stop you if you put bacon in there. I'll be very happy to eat that. <laughs> um, but you, you asked me what I'm making if I had to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, honestly, if you're asking me what I would do, I would just go buy the giant tub from Costco because I like that. So yeah, that's, that's what I would do. That's super but, heavy on the mayo. Yeah, there's a lot of mayo in there. It's it's creamy. Yeah. <laughs> Most store bought potato salads are that way. I yeah. I even in my non-German, I always add a little bit of mustard. Okay. Mustard is totally great. I love yeah, a so uh, yellow in a flavored one. So like yellow mustard, just a like a like a less than a well, it depends on the batch, right? But like a normal sized party batch of potato salad, I'll throw a tablespoon of yellow in there. Oh yeah, I mean you like. I think if I'm making it from scratch, I'm putting mustard powder in there anyway. Yeah. So mm-hmm. probably yeah. But then German is like you gotta. It's like stone f- ground. Look, yeah, man, stone, stone ground, ground yeah. is the flavor. There are potatoes here, but stone ground mustard is the flavor. Also with bacon. Sure, great. Yeah, it's wonderful. <laughs> with I, bacon on nearly anything. Great. I I had thought about picking that for my second one, and now I'm left to think. Oh man. I think one of the th- things I like to do that's not a side. That's not a side. Grilled vegetables are not a side. That's a main. Mm. It's not a it's, side. You you could argue it. I mean, there are certainly people who will eat it as a main. I think I would like grilled vegetables also in addition to my meat though. Because one of the things I like to do is like while cooking, especially if you have like meat that's going all day or something, like if you've been cooking all, like sometimes you do like like the barbecue hangout where you barbecue lunch through dinner. 
Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. If you're gonna like make ribs or something, you take real go in and just yeah, yeah. So you do like sausages at lunch, and then you leave those ribs or whatever else on on low. But then in yeah. the mean, you can keep like food coming out of there. And one of those things I like is to like get onions and like broccolini and other stuff on that grill. That's not a side. That's like a snack. Hmm. I mean, but if you use the broccoli or something to make like broccoli salad no. or you know that counts. No. How do you? I don't, I don't know. I don't, how do you guys feel about deviled eggs? Love deviled eggs. Big fan. I, I'm going with deviled eggs. I'll give you that. That's a good one. Okay. Uh, ooh. Or, or, Walking. home, or, mm, or homemade barbecue beans. All right. So then, yeah, like, I, I think barbecue beans are like absolutely. It has to be barbecue staple. beans because deviled eggs are an appetizer. That's not a side. It's got to be barbecue beans. I would happily eat enough deviled eggs to make it a side. <laughs> or, a ma- or a main. I mean, just, I'm not going to say I haven't eaten a plate of deviled eggs for dinner. Oh, yeah. Put bacon in those too. Oh, yeah. Put bacon in those. And a little bit, a tiny bit, like a sprinkle of cayenne on I'm top. Gonna blow your mind. I'm going to blow your mind right now and wrap them in bacon. Uh, nah, nah. You don't need to wrap them, man. I, like, I'm not going to say no if you did this and gave it to me. I'm going to eat that. That's going to be very good. But, like, I, I'm there for oh. the filling, <laughs> which you are limiting. Does anyone wrap. does anyone want to take my barbecue beans because I'm switching to jalapenos wrapped in bacon? Uh, so that's like also yeah. again an appetizer style thing. Dang but it, like I, app, those are right, so fine. good. Fine, though. look, so good. <laughs> look, I'm sticking so to it. Good. I'm yeah. going to say that's the, just a that's an app unto that's an itself. App. All right, all right, all right. With now, so for barbecue beans though, there's a lot of different flavors there. I think I'm going with the standard like Bush's style flavor of yeah, it's like a sweet baked hickory, bean kind of thing. sweet, mm, smoky maple. maple flavor. Yeah, the traditional idea people have when you say baked beans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going corn a, and baked beans. That's my two. I think that's extremely solid. I certainly would have picked it if you hadn't picked it. So all right. Uh, all right. So this Michael. Yeah, I'm curious what we get now. Okay, so Andy kind of made my choice for me, uh, and this this is one that you you're not gonna find much out here. Oh man, he's um, gonna have he's gonna go two for two. I'm gonna go with hush puppies. No. Yep. For people that don't know, hush puppies are fried cornbread. Basically, balls, fine cornbread balls. You should have just I mean, said cornbread, and right. then I could have agreed with you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to say cornbread because no one else said it. No, you can't say that. Hush puppies no. are cornbread. You can't. He just changed the form. So did he just say cornbread by saying hush puppies? <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So what's the, what's the deal with hush puppies? Because there's the other What's the other Would one. Would you be eating both? No. Hell no. Uh, you can't have both. I probably wouldn't make them both. I would make one or the other. What's the could. other thing? What's the other thing that's like a hush puppy, but it has stuff in it? I mean, you can mix things into the batter. You're talking about like fried macaroni balls or something? <laughs> I would eat that. Mm-hmm. That sounds great. Uh, no, there's something else that's like a, it's like a fried corn bread, something with filling. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. I'm just thinking of fair food now. I have no idea what you sounds talking great. About. Fair food. Uh, what's what's the deal with hush puppies? Uh, they're a very southern thing. Um, yeah, I mean, you just you like if you go out to get barbecue somewhere, they're they are always on the menu. Uh huh. So those like and and it's it's one of the it's one of the side dishes. So it's funny that you limited us to two because when I go out to like when I go out to a barbecue place, there are three sides that I get if it's the first time I'm there. Um, that. I kind of judge them by as much as I judge the meat, and they are coleslaw, baked beans, and hush puppies. Mm, baked beans, I would definitely. Yeah, you know, two out of three of those things make sense in judging. I mean, I think the hush puppies being essentially cornbread make perfect sense. It's just, you know. I'd rather know whether their cornbread is moist or dry versus just fried. Well, but. Uh, 
uh, that's the same thing with hush puppies, right? They can they can easily be dried out if you cook them wrong, but if you cook them right, they are crispy on the outside and super like pillowy soft on but the is inside. But hmm, is it more important to make a good cornbread or a good hush puppy? I'm going to say it's easier to mess up a hush puppy than it is cornbread. Cornbread is more forgiving. Okay. All right. So cornbread is the easy mode. That's what people do out here because we don't have any good barbecue places. Or just because cornbread's better. I don't know. I don't know if I've ever had a hush puppy the way you're describing it. So I'm open to be swayed. (laughs) If one wants to send me food. Which is funny right. because Michael and I agree so much on meat. I don't know why you're against this. It sounds delicious. What's the problem? <laughs> it is delicious. Uh, yeah, let let him let him eat it. I don't know. Whatever. Sure, I'll, I'll eat that. You put it in front of me. Great. I think the I think I'm left to like in a weird spot here because there's another really obvious one that no one said, but my other choice kind of precludes me from wanting to pick it. Because like if I had potatoes, <laughs> if I have potato salad, I don't want mac salad because they're basically the same thing. Oh, you can't pick mac salad. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like, I can't pick that. No. Nah. But that is another extremely common thing to see. At, but like, this isn't about right? common. This is about what. No, you, but I'm what saying they're like have. you know. I don't gotta well, have I, mac I salad. I would have been picking beans. Is my point. <laughs> I see. Got it. Um, so I think like you know with stuff that's left here, I'm gonna take like some kind of a. Um, like a collard greens or a salad of some type, because I like that's the that's the stuff that's left that I'm interested in having, right? You could have gone straight mac and cheese. Yeah, you could have yeah. gone mac and cheese or grits. Nah, I I agree. Grits like counts as a side, but I'm not gonna. I'm not picking grits. I that's my West Coast like flavor. Grits. I think the only time I've had it has been with um, chicken fried steak in a biscuits and gravy type thing. Hmm. Okay. That's the only time I've ever had it. What so, did... I mean, like, I, I'm not, like, super excited about picking collard greens, but I think that's a common barbecue accoutrement that I enjoy eating and would be happy to have. Okay. Well, Honestly, maybe like at this point though, if you're getting down this to this level, all the good ones have been taken. You know, we have a good selection here. And if you just brought like French fries, I'd be okay with that too. At this point, yeah. no, I'd have, I'd have gone one. I'd have had I had one more round on you guys of another one that never would have been taken. Okay. Uh, are you guys at all familiar with Brunswick stew? No. Don't so even this know is, what this that is. This is even more of a of a localized dish than than hush puppies. Um, but it's a super North Carolina thing. Uh, it is a it is almost like a a barbecue stew. So it's a a tomato based stew, uh, and it's got uh, chicken stock, garlic, uh, fire roasted tomatoes, barbecue sauce, Worcestershire sauce. You know, depending on the recipe, these these all change. Uh, onion, brown sugar, but you put pulled pork and or uh, like shredded chicken into the stew. And then it has corn, usually corn and lima beans. Why didn't you lead with this? <laughs> this just sounds like a meal. Like, I don't think I need the barbecue anymore. I'll just eat that. And, and it can be a meal, but at a lot of places, you'll find it as a side. Why didn't you lead with this? <laughs> it sounds yeah, so sounds good. good. It's really, really good. good. I I can send you I I can send you a traditional recipe. It sounds like something that you would like to make, Andy. Oh yeah, I'm into that. Uh, uh, anything that can fit lima beans into it. Plus, I, it's got your it's got your corn in it. It does. I look. I I'm not married to the corn. I just thought you had to have corn, right? You know. I agree. Like, you can't not have corn. Gotta have corn. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Let's and, be sent yeah. in the group chat. Nice. Awesome. Uh I don't think there were any crimes committed here. The things left off are probably not so bad, but if you think podcast at we were gamers.com could use an email there, I have a proposition for you all. There's a we're chance listening. 
I'm there's a chance next weekend I'm getting a new smoker. With mine has been broken since Christmas. Probably since before Christmas. It didn't work at Christmas. Is my point. <laughs> we should do a barbecue off. We'll just at at home and then uh we just bring it into the pod, say what we made, and uh judge each other. Didn't get any traction. Moving on. I feel, like, I feel like that's hard to do without being able to taste it. Yeah. I think that that'll have to wait for the post COVID world. Post COVID. I, really I want to do this because I, I just, want to eat a lot really, of barbecue. I'm getting a new smoker. So I just wanted an excuse. All right. <laughs> well, you don't, you don't need an excuse. The smoker is its own reason. Yeah, well, become speak- a smoke boy. Smoke it up. Speaking of Every no day. more excuses, JJ. What? Speaking of no more excuses, JJ. Uh huh. Halo Two is working again. Oh yeah, man! What a god! This podcast is so good. Segways, man. <laughs> uh, that's true. It is, Andrew. You and I played a game which we had on pause for a couple months or something. At least a month. I started to be like, I wonder if he doesn't want to play this anymore. <laughs> I li- nah, like, I, I was, I was, re- I was waiting. I was just like, I never saw any patches or anything happen in, yeah, in Halo Two. Yeah, I don't know if um, we ever talk about our problems on the pod. I think we did. We told Michael, so. right? Yes, yeah. we told Michael. I don't remember if we we mentioned it on the pod though. We yeah. definitely told Michael. Yeah. So I mean, the short version is we were playing the campaign of Halo Two co op, uh, and whatever this mission is, the Avatar is that the one? We're playing as the the uh, Arbiter, isn't it? The, the Arbiter isn't the Arbiter's yes. second mission or the first? You know, I don't know because it was so long ago. We're playing as the Arbiter, and we're going to fight this like uh, guy. I don't remember what his deal is. He's the heretic. And evil. The heretic. Yeah, sure. I don't. The lore is just like zooming way over my head. Yeah, every the time lore has come hard and fast, and also we took a break from it. I also just like run around and shoot things and don't listen to it. So, uh, is it we took a because we got to this level, and we would get to the same point in the level every time, and it would hard crash to desktop. Just like, <laughs> nope. Yep. Known uh, issue apparently that they just don't have an answer for. Yeah, uh, and we played it like ten times. Right, the level is not that long, except for a interminable elevator sequence in the middle. <laughs> and we just kept it just kept crashing, and we would be like trying to like figure out what it was. And I guess we just decided that we're gonna try and button mash through the cutscenes. There was a <laughs> well the, that same day we also tried to do multiplayer and multiplayer gave us the same map every single time yeah anyway uh yeah so then uh jj learned what the skip button was because we had to use his save since it doesn't multiplayer doesn't save multiple places yeah so i am the host or whatever and so the save is only on my machine so we can't just like go into andrew's save and load it up there on the next level or something i can't play solo and progress Yep, doesn't work. So and you can't uh, start from the checkpoint. You have to start back at the beginning of the mission every time. So attempt five hundred or whatever. Yeah, we mashed the buttons to skip the cutscene hard enough or something, and it got us to the end. It of seemed the level to not crash this through. time. Uh, and then we played like a few more levels of Halo Two, and hey, that game's still fun. <laughs> what do you know? It's it's an enjoyable game. Up. Uh, mm. Did you, how'd you like those uh, horizontal elevators we had to go through? I didn't like them so much. They uh, weren't my favorite. They weren't that bad, though. Especially they weren't as they bad you, as that other one. They give you a sniper rifle to deal with the problems. So we yeah, really it didn't have to do that much work. It wasn't so bad. It yeah. was just long, you know. Just long. No, it's good. I it's think good. Yeah. JJ it is knifed o- the... Opportune. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, JJ uh, knifed the Prophet of Regret like 17 times. I just ran up to him and started mashing the sword button. Mm-hmm. I don't know well, if that's good. what you were supposed to do. I don't <laughs> that's know. what I did, though. It worked. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, it's it's a opportune time because, Andrew, did you know that Halo 3 is coming out pretty soon? Like this month? Uh, Like maybe next week. <laughs> I think we could finish. We could. We're not gonna, but like we could. Yeah, <laughs> we're not gonna. 
realistically. Hey, we're not uh, gonna... lessons learned from this time around. Maybe we should wait. Yeah, maybe. You know, let's not jump into it immediately. Let's like slow our own roll here. You know what? Fair, smart. Never adopt the first version of the software. Wait for the 1.1. Yeah. Actually, um, Andrew, I just uh, comes out tomorrow. (laughs) It comes out by the time this podcast is up. It is already out. (laughs) So we're not finishing. So (laughs) let's just wait. I'm willing to wait for it. That's so funny. Well, we're nothing if not timely. Always a day late. (laughs) Never a dollar short exactly all right anyway halo 2 is still fun yeah we'll play halo 3 eventually but i've seen you playing something else that i want to know about because i have no idea what it is you may not have been seeing me play it though because it's only on you play (laughs) as as all the best things are actually maybe it's on epic games also i'm not sure i didn't actually look hmm um so this is uh I'm talking about Trackmania which is a game so <laughs> this game is referred to by the community such as it is as Trackmania 2020 because there's already a game called Trackmania. <laughs> so yeah, it's like <laughs> Wolfenstein, right? Like how many times have there's just been Wolfenstein? Yeah, yeah, fair. Um well not that many times because most of them have subtitles. This one doesn't have a subtitle. It's just called Trackmania. Okay. Uh, uh, what What are you tracking? So Trackmania is a series of like arcade style racing games that are like all time attack. There is no like you can't collide with anyone except the side of the track essentially. Okay. Time trial. And, yeah. And so the whole thing is, you know, these maps are, you know, there's all kinds of crazy elements. You can do loops and corkscrews and spin donuts. And, you know, it is like open wheel style racing. So they kind of look like F1 cars or Indy cars or that kind of a thing. And, um, you know, you take them, take them racing and try and get the best time. Uh, you jump on servers and the servers can have like, I don't know what the rule is on how many. I've seen some servers that have upwards of like, 150 or 200 people on them sometimes huh. it's rare that they're completely full but that's the max right right um and you just sit there and race with other people and try and get the best time it's all you do man it's very chill there's like usually some kind of like vaguely uh like dance music type playing or something in the background like the the the, mu- the bass music that comes with the game is pretty chill um, I will say that it is free to play, so you can just play, you know, the base game, uh, the campaign maps and the the training maps and stuff all uh, for free right now if you want to check it out. But the, uh, uh, the popular yeah. thing about this is like track editing or something like that. Yeah, so the, it has a track editor um, and essentially it's like tile based, right? So there's like, oh, this little piece has like a right hand turn and this little piece has a you know, is the corkscrew piece. And so you can put that there. And then this one is a left-hand turn. And this one is the piece with the turbo boost on it. So when you drive over it, your car starts, you know, speeding up. And this one is the piece with the super turbo on it, which is like the regular turbo, but like way faster. How long has this game been out? Um, I don't know, like a few months, months, less than that. So has somebody already recreated Rainbow Road? Oh, yeah, there's Mario Kart servers, man. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I raced on one that was shaped like... It was GameCube Yoshi or something, and like if you look at the trap from the Wait, track from what? over, I assume it's like Yoshi Island Raceway or something. But the the course is in the shape of Yoshi. Oh, oh, I yeah, thought the short course was the... going to be in the shape of GameCube. You were like, the out, yeah, it's, that, GameCube is, cool. is the the Mario Kart that it's from. I assume. Oh, okay. Yeah, they uh, did that in one of the expand. I think they did that in one of the expansions. That same course in Mario Kart Eight. Really very I think, believable I think so and so the outline of the track is yoshi but this person because the track editor is there filled in the inside too and it's so like when you start the map you get like the overhead view of everything and it just looks like yoshi is sitting there awesome. um and then you know you can join like custom servers that people run or you can have uh, them run their server you know run a server for you 
uh, and the custom servers start getting into like wild stuff because there's all these plugins and like things that go with the server that like let you rate tracks and give them scores, let you let them play custom music over tracks for you, hmm. let them do stuff that like you know uh, gives you like local records and all this kind of stuff, which like ends up putting like tons of cluttered boxes all around the sides of the UI, <laughs> which I know sounds really dumb, but it's like really, it, it, you just go into this game expecting some really dumb stuff and it is fun. <laughs> it doesn't disappoint. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, sure uh, enough, it's called the Yoshi Circuit. Third yeah, see, track I, of, the, of the egg cup. Yep. Huh. Yeah. Uh, and you so you know, you'll be Kart playing... Again. You'll just be playing these maps, um, you know, running around, and it's not just like finish to finish. So you know, because there'll definitely be cases where, like, oh, if you jump the track at this certain point, you know, you can like save a bunch of time. So then they start doing stuff like the map creators will add checkpoints in certain parts, right? And you have to hit all the checkpoints, not necessarily in order, but you do have to hit them all before hitting the end. Uh, so you know, you develop little things like that. Oh, this piece of road has like a a curved surface instead of a flat surface right mm -hmm. so you can use a curved surface like that if you take it the right way to cause a jump and jump the side of the track and do stuff like skip a turn or you know other stuff like this uh it's just like a very chill thing to do it requires like you know very little brain power uh and there are constantly if you're playing uh online there's constantly other people there and you can kind of just like watch what other people are doing because you see their ghosts and their cars all the time and so if you like can't figure out what to do at a certain part, just crash your car and wait. <laughs> and eventually someone will come by and it'll just be like, oh, this is how they take this turn, right? It's like, oh, they, you know, they you can see when their cars are breaking because you'll see like skid marks or whatever, or you know, see the lights behind their car, and like they'll then they'll make the turn and you'll be like, Oh, okay, that's what I need to be doing. Huh. Uh, if you're playing solo or like the campaign maps or something, you'll see a bunch of uh, ghosts from people whose times are near your time which is actually even better in a lot of cases because then you see like, how do I get faster? <laughs> right. It's like, I I've taken this in what I think is the fastest way I can. You know, I got a silver medal or something. Uh, you know, the medals are just based on time. And at some point you're just going to be like, okay, there, I, there are four seconds of time saving somewhere that I don't understand. What do I do? Uh, you could turn on the ghosts and all of a sudden you'll see like, Oh, this guy just like, took a completely different line from what I was doing. <laughs> and you're like, well, what's up with that? And then, you know, you kind of follow it a little bit and you realize, oh, that lets me carry like double the amount of speed into this part over here. And now all of a sudden, you know, you're way faster. Or this lets you make a jump that you weren't able to make before and skip a whole turn or something like that. That's cool. It's just like a really chill time. And so, you know, you hang out on some of these servers that, you know, have these custom music playlists. And a lot of them are like, you know, just playing like dubs, generic dubstep or like, you know, trance or you know just like really like zoning out type music um or like you know a lot of people will just mute all the sounds anyway and play whatever they want yourself right because it's that kind of a game where you're just kind of competing against yourself anyway mm -hmm. so kind of who cares what everyone else is doing um but i just it's been very very relaxing just to like sit there and like race some races and i've joined a couple of these uh servers that have just like really silly maps and stuff on them uh because this game lets you do all kinds of wild stuff and uh this one this map is called star wars metallica first off so you can like guess that it's good just from that name yep <laughs> uh the game lets you display text on the front of your screen so it does that several times it's like pops up giant pop-up text that says star wars and metallica <laughs> and uh you, you go by a certain tur and it'll say like now this is pod racing <laughs> oh no <laughs> and like you go around a certain corner and there's like a um i don't know what the like a some s's some s curves where it just goes back and forth chicanes i guess you might call it and then you enter the obi-wan action cam <laughs> <laughs> where they take the camera control away from you because normally it's like third person behind your car or first person in the car but mm -hmm. when you go through certain features, like if you're doing a loop, right, it doesn't make any sense for you to be behind the car because what does that even look like? So they put you in, they force you into first person when you do loops and stuff like that. And then it goes back after you're out. 
well, he uses that to put you into the Obi-Wan action cam where it puts you into like a really zoomed out third person and then it just shakes the camera all around <laughs> in a way that makes it completely undrivable. <laughs> you have like no idea what direction you're going. It's just like, you know, while you're trying to navigate these chicanes, you just crash into the wall immediately. <laughs> um, it's extremely silly. And so like dumb, silly stuff like this, right? Right. Uh, it's been super fun. Uh, there are like payment options. You can pay $10 a year, not as a subscription, they say, but like, look, man, that sounds like a subscription to me. Uh, and the, you, every month they are going to be releasing new campaign maps. So stuff you can play solo. And then that also lets you access like these custom servers and stuff online. And then there's an even higher tier of payment. That's like $30 a year. And that is like gives you access to changing your skins and like doing a whole bunch of customization stuff, which seems insane to me for a free to play game to gate all the customization behind a payment instead of the other way. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's how it works. So I don't know. I paid them $10. I feel like I will have fun playing this for about like five to six months and then I'll be good. That sounds never, like you never, work. never pay them again. <laughs> Nice, man. Yeah. So it's just been like super chill, you know, just like, I'm going to run a few tracks here. I don't really have to think this hard. I can put on a movie or watch a, a shows or listen to music or whatever and just kind of zone out while I try and shave that extra one and a half seconds off my time. Right. That did. It's been cool. Sweet. I, uh, I got as far as finishing the smash event this weekend to get new spirits and putting ff12 in the machine after that and then trying to keep up with the star treks we had to watch and some star wars i have to watch <laughs> so michael what have you watched well the one silver lining of being stuck inside as much as we have is managing to cross a whole bunch of shows off of our to watch list and the most recent one was that we finally got through The Witcher. I'm so happy right now. I'm smiling, so good, you I mean, you smiling know, from you know. ear to ear. So happy. What? Okay, now you've seen it in person. What a good show. It was, wasn't it? Uh, now that you've seen it in person, how do you land on the time thing? I liked it. Spoilers. So <laughs> going yeah, forward, yeah, spoilers. Uh, yeah, big big um, major spoilers. So I was trying to knowing, kind of knowing that having heard that that was what they did with it, I was watching it kind of with an eye towards okay, at what part do I think I reasonably would have realized that they're not in the same time? Okay. And I think that the moment that stood out to me that that would have actually caught my attention was when he is trying to um, heal the Strega. Because you see the oh, picture. Oh, yeah, that episode, the yeah, kid, that one gets you, you that picture. way. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you see the them as kids, started, but, and yeah. but you've already seen them as kids other places. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a really yeah, so good that, scene. I like I like that whole Striga episode quite a bit. It's definitely one of the better like random Witcher stories. I think it's really good. Well, it kind yeah, of gives it, you it, it, a good sense of the universe too. Of like, none of these people are really that likable. It, yeah. yeah, and that's like yeah. I've actually been reading some of the books in the Witcher series, and it, and you know, it's pretty true. <laughs> A lot of these people are kind of jerks. You don't real feel don't feel too great about, you know, some of the stuff they're up to. Yeah, and it gives it gives good insight into his character too. The what he you know what really motivates him when he says, "I only kill monsters." Mm hmm. Yeah, because he definitely then later refuses right to kill stuff because he's like, "Oh, that's that thing it's is cursed. It's not a monster or." Yeah. Would you know would not kill it, but doesn't get the chance to stop it from being killed. Yeah, he's an interesting character. I love that he doesn't get 
the like you don't get the backstory all the time on him like yeah you know that the place they made the witchers are dead you know that he's had a hard life you know that he's done all these things but like even though you have a bunch of backstory on him within the show because he's lived so long and you jumped timeline you've jumped so far ahead in the timeline there's still so much about him that is off the table that you'll never know uh i think that's pretty cool uh well i think it it, it, like makes it good because you know he like you say he's lived so long who actually was around when he was born but to yeah, tell you, you can... right? Like there's no one he could meet that would be that except other witchers maybe. Right. right. But it seems like most of them are, are not around. There's cool moments in there where people call him like the butcher of whatever. And you're kind of like, huh, that's weird. Uh, why would they call him the butcher of that? I wonder if it's backstory or whatever. And then later on you figure out, Oh no, there, that was the place he was when he killed all those people. Yeah, it's literally like referencing a thing you saw earlier in the show but didn't yeah. know it, right? Because because yeah, they make it so obscure that you can't figure it out until later. I thought they said that I thought they said Blaviken in that first episode. Oh, they definitely did, but like you may not have been putting it together, right? They, sure, sure, yeah. Because they don't call him the butcher of Blaviken like right off after that incident, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's like a passing reference by the bard. Mm-hmm. Who is a a great character, by the way. What did you think of the... uh... So he he runs into those elves in that one town. And there's like subplot about elves. Especially when you talk about the Tamarians and other stuff like that. What do you think is going on there? And were you annoyed by how vague it was? Um... I think because it was so vague, I didn't give it a whole lot of thought. As a person who has read the books now, I can be <laughs> this guy and tell you if you want to know what's up with the elves, read uh, book, read you, you could read the books. Uh, or actually, you could even play the games, and I think it goes through a lot of it, too. Uh, yeah, the, there is definitely something up with the elves. And I will say that the writer of these books who, you know, you know, generated the character and stuff is Polish. Uh, there's a lot of like Polish history and like Eastern European history kind of bound up in some of this stuff. And like, I think the books at one point reference the fact that the humans are carrying out a pogrom on the elves. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, you know, in the books, I don't know that they like go all that way in the show, but they're not like being mentioned. treated well that there was a wholesale slaughter of the elves in the show in one or at least one of the episodes maybe two yeah so stuff is bad the interspecies relationships aren't very good is this is this maybe not obvious to everybody but the man that he was talking to the elf he was talking to is the enemy of uh series grandmother of calanthe i i caught that yeah and started Mm -hmm. an uprising that led to the program i guess you called it well that's what the author called it i don't know that they said that in the show so yeah but yeah it's uh you know he he led the elvish uprising right later which is the field of bones which is where that comes from yes Mm -hmm. yeah i didn't quite That one was hard, I thought, on people to put together. Yeah, it's hard because it gets like it's the it's half told by a song at a party, and I have a feeling if there are additional seasons, we will hear more about elves. That show, I feel like, has the same promise as like season one of uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Except yeah. that I feel maybe because of Henry Cavill and his character's mean mug slash comedy routine that he does sometimes, there's a good chance it'll at least be watchable no matter what happens. <laughs> I I would just be interested to see another season only to see how they decided to structure it. Because yeah, they, I think the gimmick's a, over, how, right? The gimmick's done, so they, could, they told one story 
they had one story arc right and a much longer story arc and they came together at the end but it meant that the the shorter time wise story arc didn't have to be able to fill up that much actual episode time i have a guess jj to yeah. his question based on cards i'm okay. gonna guess they're still gonna time jump could be i have no idea what they will choose to do i think it's pretty clear though from the show right that like nilfgaard are the big evil bad guys yeah and they're not going to resolve an invading army with like one dude a little girl and a sorceress yep right mm-hmm. so gonna have to be more stuff that happens before yeah. At the at the very least, part of I think it's it's pretty obvious that part of the second season is going to be finding Yennefer. Okay, I mean I, I I don't know what they will choose to do, and I'm not like all the way through the books. There's a lot of them, so I, I don't, don't know. know that I um, agree with the it's the search for Yennefer. I don't know that that's going to be the whole thing, but that will be part of it. I don't know. I I get a weird feeling that she's not dead because of the way they shot it and she just disappears or whatever. Oh, I don't think she's dead either. But they they the way they shot it makes it seem like she's not. But she could be very easily given the show. Uh I just guessing based on what is available to my knowledge feel like there's a lot of time jumping that has to happen and world building for the war with Nilfgaard that eventually comes. Right. Cause I think you, you sort of see that like they had one battle, right. And you know, that's not enough to stop a giant country like Nilfgaard appears to be right. So I think there's a lot more to come with that. And I think that that is going to be the main, ar- those are the Nilfgaard is the white walkers of this show, right? Hmm. Just hopefully it's resolved a little better. So one of the things that seems to be, prevalent in the games is that Siri is as important of a character, if not more important than Yennefer. And she has to grow up to do a lot of this type of stuff that happens with Nilfgaard, I think. Right. Like you can't like they're going to need her powers and you can't really send a kid into battle. Do you, do you see, do you play the games, Andy? No, I'm talking about the cards. I literally am just guessing based on the cards. Okay. Michael, do you play the games? No, I have them. I have all of them, but I have not actually played them yet. Witcher 2 and 3 are fantastic games. You guys should play them. Uh, I know. They're they're on my list. We have to play FF12 first. I know. So many other things first. All right, Michael, play us out with a little bit of news, and then we gotta we gotta I gotta go finish my taxes. That's a good thing to do. Um, <laughs> my head is in my hands over here. <laughs> <laughs> when uh, when we can all travel again, you might have to put uh, China on your to travel list because they are building <laughs> in 2021 a one to one scale Freedom Gundam from Mobile Suit Gundam Seed. Wow. That's Why, big. In can Shanghai. I? Can I make a counterpoint? Sure. If it's a one-to-one scale Gundam, might it tour the world since it can move? Bro, you think this is an actual Gundam? They're building a real Gundam here. No, they're building a statue, dude. Oh, it's a statue. That's not as exciting. It's still pretty exciting. Oh, it's pretty small. Forty-nine feet tall. You That's could, like pretty tall. It's really tall. You got to be able to get in it at least. Somehow I doubt it. Yeah, I don't think so. They had a similarly large sized Gundam in Japan when I went to visit there. Uh, but you couldn't get in that. It was just a statue. Yes. Why I don't know they, if it was the same size. Though. Why are they Minus building four. a Gundam? I would understand one being in Japan where they... Because it's supposed to be built... Actually, there is there is another one supposed to be built in Japan. But this one is being built in front of a Japanese-owned shopping park in Shanghai. Interesting. So it's an ad. 
I mean, yeah, cooler than a billboard. Slash tourist attraction. Here you go. Yeah, come to the Japanese market in Shanghai. We have a Gundam. All right, sold. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go. It's not. Yeah, a... I mean, it's doing its job already, and it's not mm, even built. Not a hard sell. All right, if you uh, have been inside of a Gundam or have suggestions for things to smoke in the new smoker podcast at WeWereGamers.com, where else? Uh, we're on social media. You can find us at we Were Gamers. Uh, you know, send us tweet at us your questions uh, on there, and we'll you know maybe talk about them on here. You can also send emails to podcast at WeWereGamers dot com. We're also this podcast is available on like every podcasting app from Google to Apple to uh, Stitcher and Spotify, and uh, view this on YouTube. And it's very helpfully organized on YouTube even. So check that out. Search up We Were Gamers. Hit the subscribe. And uh, yeah, get, you just want to subscribe to that hot sc- carbon scoring content. It's on there. Next week is a new subspace transmission. Check it out on YouTube. And also, uh, hey, keep the emails about food crimes coming. There were some suggestions and comments about barbecue. Thank you for the emails. And inspiring the barbecue discussion this week and then uh yeah we'll do more of them sorry but you know we like food and it's we were gamers so we get to talk about stuff that we do like we